All right, here for the third video on this assignment, we're going to be loading and utilizing a Lua script on our aircraft. I have a couple kind of other notes to include in this video, but that's our main uh, topic for today. So um, let's go into Mission Planner and couple cover the notes, couple cover a couple of the notes first, and then we'll jump into Lua scripting. Okay, so some of you uh, might have wondered, you know, why your quadcopter started in Australia instead of in the AST field, <laughs> okay? Um, and you see mine is now here instead of over here, okay? I want to show you how to do that. If you want to set your home location to a specific spot, like in the real world, then what you can do is you can disconnect from the simulated uh, Arducopter, okay? You can come into the Plan tab, and if this stuff bothers you, you can just right-click and say clear mission okay and you can right click anywhere on the screen you want so you know if you want to put it over by your house or up by your grandparents house in idaho or whatever um, you can right click on the screen and say set home here okay it will set the home there and then you go back to simulation connect to your multi-rotor like we did the first time and when it connects it will set the home to that location i should have showed you, showed you this in the first video but Oh well, <laughs> now you know. Okay, once it connects up here, once the map loads, we'll see it's now over here. Okay, let's go into the plan page here. Oh, that now I have two copters. That's interesting. I think that's probably just an artifact of Mission Planner, but it has moved the copter over here as the home location. If we zoom in a little bit, I can't really see it, but there's a little H right there. Um, should be the home location. So that's how you can move the home location of your copter if you want to do that. Also, if your map's not like multicolored and stuff like mine, don't worry about it. Um, this is just a terrain, uh, like a terrain layer, I guess you could say, that I have turned on in Mission Planner for some other stuff I was working on. You don't need that to be like that for what you're doing. Okay, so there's that. Um, let's go over to the assignment loading utilizing a Lua script. Okay. So this is the Arduino wiki page on Lua scripts. And what Lua script scripts are is basically a way you can do a lot of different things with your Arduino pilot type aircraft, whether it's a quad or a plane or whatever, um, with a small script. And scripts are just kind of snippets of code, I guess you could say, that you can try out new behavior with. You can try it to get it, the copter to do certain things. We're going to use a script this semester uh, for help with tuning, as well as a script for LEDs. And you can use script for other things as well. So if you already, oops, if you already know computer science um, type background and you can write scripts, then this might be a lot of fun for you. If you've never written any code or anything like that before, don't worry about it. We're going to use preset scripts in class, but of course you can fiddle with them more if you want on your own. The nice thing is they're kind of isolated from the rest of the the control of your aircraft in a lot of ways. So uh, there's not as much potential damage to be caused by changing things. Excuse me changing things and having something go wrong in flight. So in this uh, page here, we talk about getting started. Make sure Autopilot has this uh, much flash in this memory, which our flight controllers do. So that's one thing that we had to change in the classes was use a flight controller that was um, basically powerful enough and enough memory to do this with. Okay, and I have a couple things we need to change here to get this to work in the first place. So the first thing is to set SCR enable to one to enable scripting. So let's go into Mission Planner. Go to our config tab, full parameters list. Okay. I know you all remember this list fondly <laughs> from Heather class. Oops, if I can type SCR enable. Okay. You can see mine's already enabled because I've already been testing this, but yours will be at zero, so you want to uh, set it to one. Okay. And then it says here we want to refresh or reboot. Okay. So you say, well, how do I reboot the copter if it's like a simulated copter? So the, the parameters you change on the simulated copter by default will be saved across connections, if that makes sense. So we set this to one, we write our params, okay? We then disconnect, right? Make sure this is recording, okay? And then we'll go back into simulation and connect again, okay? And the parameter should be saved as one when we double check it. So we'll double check it again this time. After connect here, Go back into config, our full parameter list, SCR enable. And again, mine's already set to one, but you can see that even across me rebooting, it doesn't go back to the default, it saves to 
to what I set it to. Okay, so our scripting is enabled, right? Now we're going to upload scripts into the Autopilot's SD card in a specific folder. Okay, once we set this to one and reboot, the Autopilot should create this folder for us. And we're going to find it is in MavFTP. Okay, this little plus thing up here, we're going to click plus. We should have a folder like this that says scripts. You can see it over here as well. So if I click on that folder, I have a script in there already. We'll put one in. Uh, in class, you guys will do that on your own. But we can say if if I have this script and I you know don't want it, I can right click and say it delete. Uh, if I don't have any scripts in there, I can right right click and say upload. Okay, and I can then pick a script file. Okay, in this case we're going to do a vertical circle Lua script. All right. If you say where do I find the Lua scripts, so let me show you that. If we go back to the mission mission planner, or sorry, autopilot wiki. We have this little applets link. It's the easy way to get there. You click on this applets link, it will go to this GitHub page. We have all these applets, these Lua applets. Now the one I'm using this thing in this example is not an applet. Okay, we will use an applet later in the semester. Uh, let's see, where is it at? Quick, quick tune. I'm in here somewhere. Quick. There you go. VTOL quick tune. We we'll use that one later in the semester. Right now, we're going to go actually to this AP scripting, go kind of up a, a directory to AP scripting, or go into examples. Now, these are example scripts, but they're not like they don't have explanatory files to tell you how to use them very much. So we're going to use one of these that I've tested already, okay. and that is the vertical circle. So we're going to Control F. I'm just going to search for it, vertical copter fly vertical circle dot Lua. So if you click on that. Okay, it's going to show us the script here, the actual code. Okay. Up in the right hand corner though, there's this download button. So you'll download raw file to your computer. It will download this file as a .lua file, which is what we want. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and save it. I already have it saved here, but I'm just going to say, yeah, go ahead and save it again. Overwrite. And now that file is in our downloads. Okay. There it is right there. So if we go back into Mission Planner onto our page we were at before, let's say this one was not here. Okay, nothing there, but we do have the scripts folder, right? So we're in scripts folder. We're going to right click and say upload. And we're going to pick that Lua script that we just downloaded from the web. It should upload into the into the aircraft like so. Okay, so now we can have the script in there. All right. Let's go. Oh, I got off that page. Sorry. Ardu pilot Lua scripting. Okay. Once it's in the folder, okay, it just here on the on the instruction page it just kind of gives you generic stuff because they don't know what script you're going to be using, of course. Okay, um, so that's some notes there. Now some of the notes about scripting we'll go over more in class and things like that. We do have some step-by-step -step examples and what scripts can do. Well, they can do some pretty cool thing, pretty cool things there. Here's a sample script here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, some troubleshooting steps there. And so forth, right? But if we go back over to this page where we have the script pulled up, you can view it here, or actually, if you download the file, you can actually view the downloaded file in like Notepad, for example. Okay, this is um, VS Code, but you can view it in just a, any kind of text viewer that makes sense. So if I wanted to view it in just Notepad, let's try that. Uh, let's go to it in the folder. I wanted to say open with. If you don't have Visual Studio Code installed on your computer, that's fine. Say choose another app. And we'll say let's open in Notepad just once. And here's the script just in text form. Okay. So this particular script has some instructions at the beginning of the script, which we're going to go over. Um, if you have an, if you do have Visual Studio Code, it'll show them in different colors, which is nice. Um, not really a, necessarily a requirement for this class, but if you do have it installed already, then it works well that way. Or if you just view it on the web, it also has different colors that are kind of shown here for the different uh, types of operations. Okay, so what does the script do? Commands the copter to take off to five meters and fly a vertical circle in the clockwise direction. So kind of like, almost like a lollipop. If you imagine it going straight up and then going around a circle, <laughs> look kind of like a lollipop. Script one works for copter, what's what we're using, so that's fine. The script waits for the vehicle to be armed and RC input to be greater than 1800. So we need a, a RC6 switch basically to be flicked on our transmitter to go high, 
and then the copter should do the following thing. Switch to guided mode, take off to 5 meters, fly a vertical circle, and then switch to RTL mode at the end. Okay, so that's the kind of instructions here. There are some other notes, depending on who wrote the code, they may have more or less notes. Um, but they have some notes here about what these different things are doing. Uh, update function is the main function that runs to check for these things and then do the circle. Okay, and then we have a return at the end of the function. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead into our uh, software in the loop simulation and try to run this script. Okay, so let's go over to Mission Planner, we'll go to Data, okay, back to our main page here. The first thing I want to do is make sure on my transmitter that I have channel 6 set to be able to be controlled. Let's turn on our camera again. Okay. So again, if you forgot how to do this, then we go into our model menu for the model we're using. And we'll go page over until we get to mixes. You can see I have some channels set up here, right? I have my channel 5 for my arm switch for Express LRS. I have channel 6 and channel 7 set up as well, controlled by SF and SC. Okay. But if you didn't have one set up for some reason, you want to go to channel 6. Okay. If you'd long press on it and say edit, and you then assign channel 6 to a source. In my case, I have it set to SF, which is this switch up here on the top. Okay. So I could flick the switch. It would then auto-populate. So let's pick something else and we'll pick SF. So you see it auto-populates to SF. We can then return. Okay. And return all the way back to the start or the main screen. And if you page over on the main screen until you get to the channels monitor, we can flip that SF switch and see channel 6 should go high and then go low when I flip it back. So let's try that. High, low, high, low. Okay, there we go. So our transmitter is, is, is communicating that switch um, or is, has that switch set up. Let's go over to Mission Planner again now. And we'll make sure the switch is set up on our joystick. So in Actions, we'll go to Joystick. Okay. And we only did like the first basic stuff before. We want to make sure that channel 6 is set up as well. So we're going to go to auto detect channel 6. Okay. We're then going to flip the switch. And we see it move right there. So it is auto detecting correctly. Okay. And we can then make sure we save it. All right. Make sure we're still enabled. So if it says disable on the button, that means it is enabled because the button will disable it. Okay. And we can see it's also right here. So if we go into our setup here, we go to channel 6 on our radio calibration page, we flip the switch, and 6 should go high, goes up to 2000, which is above 1800, what we need for the script to run. Okay, let's check the other conditions of the script. We need to have a switch that goes high, basically. Okay, We need to arm the vehicle first and then switch that switch high, and what should happen is the vehicle should go into guided mode, take off through the vertical circle and then switch to RTL. So let's try it. Okay, let's go into Mission Planner here to our data page. Okay, we get to our Actions tab. Right now we're in Stabilized Flight Mode. Uh, we basically just need any mode we can arm in. So for our case right now, not Auto. We don't need Auto to do this. What happened my map? That was zoomed way out. That was weird. Okay, let's go back in a little bit so we can see. We won't be able to see much with this script because it's mostly all vertical movement, but have a little bit closer anyways. So we should be able to arm our copter, okay, and then uh, flip our switch for channel 6 high and see it do this. The only way we'll have indication-wise here uh, really is the altitude we can see, okay, and then we'll have uh, messages in the um, message tab here that are saying different things about what the script is doing. Okay, so let's try it. We'll go ahead and <clears throat> arm our copter, and it flips channel 6 high, Okay, it goes into guided mode just like it's supposed to. We see it start to climb here and it gives us these messages on the artificial horizon as well as in here. Okay, those are part of the script. I don't know why they're set up that way, but they are set up that way. And you can see those in the script as you as you watch it. If this were a 3D view, we could see it a little bit easier, but it is moving around, of course, and doing that big vertical circle. Okay. And then at the end here of the circle, as you can see, it's coming back down the other side of that in terms of altitude. We can, uh, we'll see it switch to RTL flight mode and then land itself. There we go. Finished square, switching to RTL, RTL. And it's going to come down to land. We'll see it descend. I don't know why it says finished square. It did a circle, I thought, but <laughs> I don't know. 
We'll watch RTL down to the ground. And we hit, we see it hit zero meters, sim hit the ground, disarming motors, aircraft disarmed. Okay, so that is how you can run one type of, back over here, one type of Lua script on your aircraft. That's the one I'd like to use for this example, but other types we'll look at in class a little bit, but this one seems to work pretty well for an actual flight controlling Lua script. All right, okay, that should do it. So make sure when you do these things, um, you want to uh, make a, a screen recording of yourself doing this, uh, upload it to YouTube and give me the YouTube uh, link for it, okay? I don't want huge videos of you trying to figure it out while you're doing it, so practice a little bit, then take a video of yourself doing it in a concise manner. It shouldn't be more than five minutes, and that way I can see you know how to do everything, but I don't have to watch you, um, you know, figure it out and, and watch a 45-minute video, okay? All right, thanks for watching.